Hello, I'm Marianne Deveni. Today we are looking at just one chart, a chart showing U.S. equity implied volatility, and right now it sits about 47% below its long-term average. So the question I'm asking today, is the U.S. Fed squelching volatility, and can it last? As some believe, the longer it stays lower, the greater the risk of future bubbles. I have with me today David McCullough, who's Vice President and Director of TD Asset Management and Portfolio Manager of the TD Canadian Bond Fund, as well as several other funds. Well, thanks for joining me, David. Thanks for having me. Let's start off with the chart that uh, you've brought. Let's First of all, a lot of people define it a little bit differently. So how do you define volatility and, and where are we right now? Sure. A lot of people today are talking about volatility. Mm. I find very few people really understand volatility. So without getting deep into the math, what we're looking at is a standard deviation of daily returns on asset prices. And it's usually expressed as an annualized figure. Or put in another way, the relative degree of price movements on a daily basis. And, and the great thing about volatility, it doesn't discriminate or it really doesn't care if it's an up movement or down movement. It's right. just the degree of that movement. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as where we are today, looking at the VIX, which is the most common measure when people think of a volatility measure, it measures U.S. equity implied volatility. Right now it's roughly at 10, 10% 10 volatility. Compare that to its long-term average, roughly 20%, or about 50% below its long-term average. But regardless if you're looking at volatility on equities, on rates, or even currencies, uh, two things are common. We're at multi-year lows, and we're well below, 40 to 50% below long-term averages. So back to my question, is the Fed actually squelching volatility and, and trying to keep it down? It depends on who you ask. Some believe this environment is just spurred on by a complacency in the market. Investors are complacent, and that's why we're in a low volatility environment. And that may be correct, but it's a lot like saying bonds are up because there's more buyers than sellers. Mm. It's not incorrect. It's mm -hmm. not overly insightful either. Right. I believe there's three macro drivers that have driven volatility these uh, low levels. Monetary policy is one. Where we are in the econo economic cycle is another factor. And just the volatility of economic data is a third. So we're really, um, it is partly the Fed in anyway, would you say? Is one driver more important than the other? Well, when you look at all three drivers, they are interrelated. Mm. Uh, but if I were to choose the most important driver right now, certainly monetary policy. Um, and when you look at monetary policy, I would break it down further. There's three aspects of monetary policy. There's the overnight rates, there's unconventional policy, and there's communication tools. And then diving deeper into those, uh, look at overnight rates. Right now, they're at record lows. And central banks, whether it's the Fed or other central banks, have communicated that they're going to keep them at those record lows for an extended period of time. And that's dampened volatility across markets. You look at unconventional policy. Quantitative easing, for example, where central banks are expanding their balance sheets, that has a dampening effect on volatility. And finally, communication. And looking at the Fed, they've come a long way in their communication. Go back uh, to the Greenspan era, his communication was very opaque. Contrast that to Bernanke, or now Janet Yellen, much more open, much more transparent in their communication. And couple that with uh, a movement towards for forward guidance. Mm -hmm. So I think as central banks improve and, uh, and fine-tune their communication policies, not only where we are currently in, in their monetary policy stance, but on a forward-going basis, that's going to have a dampening effect on volatility as well. So where do you see it going from here then? More of the same? One thing to keep in mind with volatility, it's reactive. It's not proactive, okay. and it's certainly not predictive. So if we were to see a crisis event or a black swan event, you would see a spike in volatility. And I'm not ruling that out. But absence of a crisis, given these three factors, I believe volatility is going to be, remain below its long-term average going forward. For a while, then. I, certainly in the next 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. given where central banks are right now, and given what they've communicated as far as lower for longer, and all the stimulative measures they have in place. Mm -hmm. Now, this obviously impacts the investor as well because they're going to be impacted by the volatility and, and trading. How is that? Well, certainly, there's a number of implications. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd, there's four that I'd like to point out. Certainly, in a low, low volatility environment, you've got a narrower range of returns, and that's just by definition. Uh, one thing I would point out, though, is lower volatility doesn't necessarily mean lower returns. Uh, an excellent case in point last year, 
the actual volatility on the S&P was below average. Yet the S&P returned 32% last year. So it was a steady increase rather than a very up and down increase. Exactly. Okay. Another aspect of a low volatility environment, uh, you don't see a lot of trading. The opportunities aren't there, especially for day traders or active traders. Mm -hmm. You just don't have those trading opportunities. So trading volumes usually decrease. What happens when trading volumes decrease? Generally speaking, liquidity decreases. What's the implications of that? When you look at the all-in cost of transacting, including price movements as a result of the trade, they tend to go up. So another implication of a lower volatility environment. And it also has an impact on investor behavior. Portfolio theory suggests that as volatility is reduced, investors tend to push their investments or push their tolerance for risk out to the right. Maybe because they have to. Maybe because they have to. Maybe because they're just being, uh, they're more comfortable taking mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. they haven't seen the volatility. They don't so, realize it's as risky. Yes. And finally, it has implications from an asset allocation perspective. Very difficult to add value from a tactical asset allocation perspective. But from a strategic asset allocation perspective, assuming you've got the asset mix right, tends to vary well in that environment. Carry trades tend to do very well in a low volatility environment, as, as does momentum strategies. And, and what we've seen historically is equities tend to do very well in a low volatility environment. So that would support TDM's view from a strategic asset allocation of having equities over uh, bonds. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. My pleasure. I've been joined by David McCullough, Vice President and Director at TD Asset Management. Thanks for watching.